So today we're gonna be designing a chair for none other than Ikea. We're gonna do the entire process of designing a concept, developing a prototype, and getting a small mass production run ready of this chair. And it's gonna perfectly blend the two worlds of unnecessary inventions and Ikea together. And you might be asking yourself, does Ikea know that I'm making this chair for them? The answer isn't yes, but the answer also isn't no. Because there's a little bit more to the story to what my relationship is to Ikea and why this video is hopefully gonna be some sort of like application to really bring that collection to life. Let me, uh, let me tell you about that. You see, I absolutely love Ikea. I mean, this, uh, this stool that I'm sitting on is made by Ikea. This lamp that I have here, this is also Ikea. This mirror's Ikea. This rug is Ikea. This chair's Ikea. This fake plant is Ikea. And this lamp and this lamp are Ikea. I even have a whole pile of stuff that I haven't even put together yet from Ikea. So this story starts about two years ago when I got an email from someone at Ikea just saying hello from Ikea. Let, let me, it was October 1st, 2021. And Ikea is actually known for doing capsule collections with a few different designers every single year. And I actually have a few of them in the Unnecessary Studio from Virgil Abloh, Daniel Arsham, Sabine Marcellus. And I wanna be the next person that has a collaboration with Ikea. But unfortunately, over the past two years, things just haven't exactly worked out. They said that they're definitely inspired by my work, but they're just waiting for the right thing and the right time to make it happen. But I do love when they said this, I would love for Ikea to be the company that you go from unnecessary to needed by many people around the world. And I think I have the perfect idea that combines the unnecessary world and the IKEA world, and it's actually uh, the basis of it is in that room. Let me uh, let me tell you about it. You see, I've got this gear closet inside my studio that has everything that I could ever need. And most importantly, it's got this pegboard system here. And I try to keep all my different tools that I might need for a different project all lined up here. And at any given time, I just gotta stroll on into this area and grab what I need and head back out into the studio. And I try to keep it relatively organized so that everything I have has a place. And then once I'm finished with it, I just venture back in here, find the place that it needs to go, and I'm I'm on my way. But that really got me thinking, what if there was a way that I'd be able to take one of those pegboard systems around with me inside my studio? That way, no matter where I am, I have all of those tools that I'm gonna need for that project. Like, just imagine it. This is the back of your chair. You've got your scissors, you've got your tape, you've got your pliers, everything you need as you're wheeling around the studio. So at any point, I don't actually have to go into the gear closet because as I'm wheeling around my studio, I've got it, I've got it right here. And I think it perfectly threads that line between being something just kind of overly absurd in the unnecessary world, but something just almost practical enough for the Ikea world. And I have a, I have a general idea of like what this looks like in my head. Let's make like a tiny little miniature model of it so we can at least get like the visual picture before we actually build out a full working prototype. And as a designer, I can only really speak for myself because my process might not be the same thing for another designer. And I can't draw whatsoever, so the way I get started is I hop right into my computer and I start designing what I see inside my head. And I'd have to say that like nine times out of 10, I can really visualize what the invention is gonna look like. And that's really how unnecessary inventions got started. I had all of these different pictures inside my head of invention ideas, and I wanted to bring them out into the physical world. I was just gonna have to teach myself a few skills to make that a reality, but also pick up a few tools that would help aid in the process as well. So that when it came to projects like this, it was gonna be no time flat that I was gonna have this idea go from my head, and then finally I would have a physical representation of it. And for this project, it uh, came out looking a little bit something like this. Here we have the mini representation of what I was thinking for this pegboard chair. Obviously, we have a nice flat seat for you to sit on, but on the back is where we have all of the pegs. And this is where you're gonna hang all your different accessories from your hammer to your scissors to your tape to your super glue, all in one place. And obviously, it's gonna wheel around the studio and hopefully be just what Ikea wants to see. So now that I have like a visual representation of the idea, I wanna make an actual working prototype of something I can sit in and actually wheel around the studio. And it's again, still gonna kinda of be like bare bones, just like proving the concept. And once we have that prototype, we'll be able to like work out all of the different kinks to make this a real chair that it would look like you purchased it in the Ikea store itself. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is actually get the base portion of our chair. And the easiest way to do that is get it inside Amazon. So in here, I'm gonna search compact rolling stool. 
and we'll see what kind of options we have. So basically, I don't want these top portions of the stool. I'm just focused on this bottom section here of the stools that we're gonna use for our prototype and our custom top pegboard seat. They're all looking pretty much the same, but my first initial thought was having this center ring here. But I also don't wanna spend a lot of money. Again, I'm just trying to like prove the concept of actually rolling around my studio in this thing. And here's one that I found that's only 35 bucks. I think this is definitely gonna do the trick. <laughs> it has a bit of mixed reviews, but we'll go ahead and we'll buy that one. It's time for the top section. So this part is actually going to be made out of metal. I thought that would be the best way to do it. Just like the pegboards inside my gear closet, this is gonna be metal. And I took the design from our prototype and I made this flat model of the design. And I'm using a company called Send Cut Send to make the metal seat. So I have the file uploaded here and we're gonna go ahead and choose what metal we wanna do. We're gonna do aluminum. We're gonna do their most popular one. And I think maybe point nine should be thick enough. I've done a few other things from them in metal and I think that'll work for the seat. And this is the best part of it. So over here I indicated the bend marks. So we want a 90 degree bend. And so now you can see the 3D file is bending one direction. And then I'm gonna add 90 degrees for the other one but change the direction of it. And look at that, we now have a seat over here that looks just like that earlier prototype that I made. And this initial prototype is gonna cost $202, but you can see the cost quickly goes down as you order more of them. So go ahead and add that to our cart. So now we just have to sit around and wait and Oh, I, I actually, we don't have to wait. The, the stuff is here, thanks to the power of video editing. And just like that, we have ourselves a full scale prototype of our pegboard stool. And I know that it looks kind of cool right now, but that's only half of it. We gotta make sure it actually functions as well. And for the things that aren't really functioning the way they should, we can go ahead and make those final changes for the final production model. Like first things first, I, uh, I definitely need to find some screws that actually fit because I'm just using the ones that came with the bottom section. And that, uh, that doesn't look too comfortable. And sit test. Number one, am I, am I gonna survive? It's actually not bad. It's actually, it's not too bad. Whoa. <laughs> the first change we need to make is that this metal is not thick enough, so it's not strong enough. So as you lean back, you sorta, sorta end up bending a little too much. We gotta make that thicker so that it's nice and sturdy. And, this, and the second change is that I think the base is too small for how big the seat is. Like, I don't exactly feel stable on it when I'm sitting on it. We need to have like a bigger radius that maybe extends further out from the base of the seat so that you feel a little bit more stable. And, uh, and we definitely need to get better screws so that I'm not getting pierced in the butt. But one thing I think that we need to go check out, do I have extras? I should have some extras here. Oh yeah. Did I properly calculate the distance that we need for these holes? Look at that. Slide this one in down here. Maybe a screwdriver in right here. We'll put some tape there, maybe a little spatula right there. What do we think of having all of these on the back here? This was my sort of thought of why it's kind of unnecessary if you feel the pegs inside your back. And so far, I think it's enough. I don't know. <laughs> so on the functionality side of things, there's a couple things that we need to do for the final design. We gotta make the metal stronger, we gotta make the base wider, and we have to fix the screws so they're not poking me in the butt. And on top of that, we also need to do a few like branding things to really tie in unnecessary inventions and Ikea. And some of those changes will fix the functionality part and tie into the branding. Because at the end of the day, this thing needs to scream unnecessary inventions and Ikea if it was gonna actually become a reality. And thinking about the unnecessary brand, the one thing that I have that's kind of consistent is my brand colors. This blue color can be seen all across things from my logo, you can find it inside my inventions, and even in the imagery that I use in my photos. So I think the best place of adding that unnecessary inventions branding into the chair is taking that blue color and adding it to the metal top portion of the seat. And once we have that perfect color, I think it's gonna look really good, especially when we beef up the thickness of the metal there. From there, I decided it was time to do a little bit of research 
research on Ikea's website to figure out what would be that touch that would make this really scream Ikea. So I started looking at some of the other rolling stools and chairs that they have, and I definitely started noticing a trend across their collection. Because Ikea is all about efficiency when it comes to manufacturing, and although they sell a whole bunch of different chairs, you can see the same base model for the different chairs across all of their different styles just in different colors. And they actually let you purchase just that bottom portion of their rolling stools, and now it seemed like an absolute no-brainer moment with the light bulb going off that this is how I was going to tie in the IKEA brand into our brand new pegboard stool. And once I bought a whole bunch of them in a bunch of different colors, I put one of them together to actually see how it looked, and there was just one last thing I was waiting for. The big shipment! We are looking for the big shipment! We, uh, we've got ourselves a, a, a big shipment. Inside this extremely overweight wooden crate, we've got 25 of the blue metal pegboard seats for our chairs. And if everything goes to plan, there should be a few of these available in a link down in the description below. And I'm gonna sell maybe a couple of them and keep the rest for myself. So if you want one of these chairs, go ahead and check out the link down below. All right, we'll get this off of here, and they're completely, they're they're completely bubble wrapped up. Let's get let's get one of these out of here. I can already tell right off the bat that this metal is a lot stronger. I can't even bend it, so I don't think we're gonna have any issues of sitting in this one. But let's get it unwrapped and reveal this beautiful blue colorway. That looks so clean. Oh my god. Just look at that blue color. Oh, it pops so nicely. And all of the different pegboard holes there. This, this thing is really coming together. So much cleaner. Where's the little? Uh, where's the little? The uh, the little razor upper. Right, right off the bat, I feel so much more sturdy that I am not going to fall over. The metal on the back like has the slightest little bit of give that makes it comfortable, but you don't feel like you're in absolute danger. And the wider IKEA base definitely helps you feel more secure when you're just sitting in it in general. And this thing absolutely rips. This is what I've been waiting for, the full wheeling around the studio. <laughs> But from our working prototype, this is looking so much cleaner. Oh yeah, and we also have flush screws up in here, so that's nice and comfortable. Here we have our first mock-up of the design, moving right into our very first prototype, into the final prototype that looks. It looks like a real chair that you would get inside of Ikea. And there's one last thing that we, uh, that we obviously still need to do to it. Full stack, we, uh, we've got ourselves a full stack on the pegboard chair. Just uh, a couple of the handy tools I might need if I'm, uh, if I'm wheeling around the studio. This thing is gonna come in unnecessarily handily while I'm working inside the studio. And I also kinda like how they jingle jangle when you're moving around. <laughs> I think that everyone should go to Ikea's Instagram page right now and say you should work with at Unnecessary Inventions and uh, maybe this'll, this'll become a reality. Because don't even get me started on the Jigsaw Puzzle coffee table. Wouldn't that be the perfect home at Ikea for the Jigsaw Puzzle coffee table? But with that, now that I'm fully set up, I might as well get working on my next project since I have everything that I'm gonna need. So I will go ahead and I'll see you at the next Unnecessary Invention. See ya! Thank you.